G'day guys, my name is Damien. Um, I'm Damien251 on Twitter and um, I do a little bit of planetary imaging with my 16 inch Dobsonium and uh, an equatorial, a homemade equatorial platform to track the, track the night sky. Um, I get reasonable images every now and again. Um, my DSO work is crap, so uh, uh, you won't see too much of that, but um, it's all a learning pro, um, process. So to, today we're here and we're going to put together a bit of a tutorial on Registax. And it looks complicated, but it's not all that complicated. Once you get the, the basic understanding, you probably only end up using four or five of the tools available to you in Registax. Um, and then you, you'll know how to process your images. And all of your images, they're, they're going to be processed differently. You can't just use a set of um, saved um, settings. They won't work. Um, there's, there's people like Chris Go who um, do do that, but Chris is more about the scientific um, data within his images. He's, he's not trying to turn them into um, uh, images to sell online or anything like that. He is under um, some pretty good skies there and he just belts them out. He just takes the data and he sends it all off to um, the, the scientific agencies that can use it. Um, my images cannot use the same settings, even from night to night, they won't. So I highly recommend not to worry about saving your settings um, and just do them manually. Once once you've done it a few times, you will, um, um, it, it'll just come to you. You'll be able to um, uh, process your images quite quickly. Uh, the the reason we're here, basically, I, I'm still only learning. I've been around for uh, a bit over a year. Imaging, it's coming up. It's not even a year yet with a planetary camera. I used to use a 10-inch Dobsonian on my phone and get some reasonable results. That was all good. Uh, but I realised I enjoyed the hobby and um, I ended up buying a 16-inch Dobsonian. Even when I got that, I did not use it for planetary. I thought it was going to be too big, so I kept using the small one. And then one night, um, I just chucked it up on the equatorial platform and lo and behold, works pretty good. Um, uh, if you have a look at this image here, I originally posted this image um, just to show you image scale. So all of the images here, you can see the Moon, um, Neptune, Triton, um, Saturn, um, Jupiter and Venus. Venus is a very similar size. I think it's about 53 arc seconds there and um, Jupiter is about 47 or something like that. But anyway, originally this top image wasn't there. And I posted it saying everything here is shot um, with 3x Barlow, same image train. Um, so they're, they're to scale. Um, a friend on Twitter, Tom, uh, TW Astro, he pointed out uh, quite rightly that Saturn was very small compared to Jupiter, which uh, traditionally they're, pr they're pretty close to the... And he thought that maybe... Um, I had used a different um, uh, image tray, maybe because I, I do have a two and a half times Barlow at home. Um, and I was starting to second guess myself because that's basically what it looks like there. Anyway, the um, long story short is I found this data on Saturn and it was from the same night as Jupiter. Um, and the, the reason why these images are different, if you look, that edge is pretty close, is that this one was shot October 22nd, and this one was the 1st of September. Now, October 22nd is about 12 weeks after opposition for Saturn. This was only two weeks after opposition for Jupiter. This one was four weeks, I think, so that's why they're much closer. So when Saturn is in opposition, it is even bigger again 
then um, the, the ring system and the planet is bigger again. So I looked at it and um, I didn't look, I found it and I didn't like the way it looked. Um, this image was originally posted and this was what I posted. And compared to the, um, the other Saturn, the other Saturn was far nicer. So I thought to myself, can I do something better with it? And ultimately, yes, I could. So I, I basically stuck that in Registax for hours and hours and just tried to work out different things. There's a, a few little things that um, weren't done in Registax. Um, and the moons um, were actually... Uh, I was watching a video from Matt Smith and a quick, easy way to bring out the moons... Um, I'd realised, so the moons weren't even involved in that when I posted it back. But anyway, long story, uh, the long and the short of it is your processing most likely can be improved just with your understanding of how things work. So um, I'll get rid of these and let's get into it. Okay, guys, let's try again. I've just waffled on with crap for um, about... 10 minutes and nothing too beneficial in there. Um, uh, let's have a look at the buttons and see how we go. Um, so do all is a basically the um, the button that you press before saving. Make sure you've pressed this before saving so it's applied all of your settings across the board to um, to the image that you want to save. Save image. Um, I always, after I've done wavelets, always put a little W after them so I know where I stand. Always save them back into your 16-bit uh, image file you use. Don't go to JPEG or don't go to an 8-bit file um, while you're still processing, you lose so much data and it'll just, um, uh, yeah, you, you just won't get the, the best result for you. So um, uh, that's a save image. The realign with process buttons, basically a, a, a similar sort of thing. It, it, it brings everything together. Um, show full image. So at the moment, that image you see there is 100% um, uh, of its size if you go to save uh, show full image what you'll find is if it's not its native size you'll start to see artifacts um, and um, bits and pieces with the image see like down here so I always try and process in um, its native size um, sometimes you will, but just try and find, understand before you do anything, try and find that balance where you can see all the artifacts it generates disappear. Um, anyway, like I said, I, I try and um, process in, in um, that size. Show processing area. I've got it set for the full size of the image. You see those corners up there? Uh, align points we won't need to worry about we don't do that it's for more for the um, uh, align if you've got down if if you want to do your videos and align them um, in registax uh, I used to use it when I was have my 10 inch dob uh, and my phone um, because I didn't know how to use auto stack at three but auto stack at three is better um, uh, there are all the old images. I'm oh, sorry about that. I'll just go back up the top. Um, nothing really there we use at the moment. The tools, no, they're all basic. So your processing area, that's where we were doing before. You can change the size of that to um, limit the impact on your computer. Limited settings, no, I don't um, uh, use that. A lot of people will will play with luminance and, and other features. Um, we'll use them in Windu Pulse and um, uh, most people use Photoshop um, to finalise their images. I don't, um, I don't use Photoshop. I use GIMP. 
probably because I'm a tight ass and can't be bothered to pay for the um, uh, subscription. I, I should. <laughs> probably another thing I should do, but I don't. Uh, auto detect color and black and white. I've always got that checked. Um, I have none of these checked. Doesn't really worry me. Um, always check for updates. This one's um, uh, up to date at the moment, so which is good. Um, sorry if I'm going fast, but um, I, as I said, th this will be a 40 minute video if um, I take it slow and um, you'll just be listening to my voice drone on, which uh, will probably put you in a bad headspace. But uh, anyway, we'll look at these functions over here um, histogram. It's it's the same as it is in all um, programs. It'll um, brighten your image or darken your image, depending on what you want to do. Just be very, very careful with it, though. It will um, cut off data on either end that you are um, applying um, brightening or darkening to, as you can see. Um, Get rid of that one. Gamma, I'll come back to that. Um, I don't really use it. I do use it for exposing the moons, but in your general processing, um, I, I don't use it. If the seeing is very, very good, you will be able to get good data on your moons, and it's a simple way. Um, Matt Smith um, has got a video about it, and um, we, uh, I uh, used his... Um, tutorial or his um, uh, uh, technique to bring out the moons in this image which um, thanks Matt if you uh, are watching um, let's keep going so gamma let's get rid of that color mixing it's it's I, I don't really use it I do um, in um, do all my um, coloration and stuff in in GIMP um, as you can see here, make it grayscale or very colored, colorful. Um, luminance, don't use that. Black and white image, as you can see. Um, uh, wind dew posts, if you were going to um, put in a luminance file. But um, yeah, don't, don't use that. Um, if you zoom, so whatever you want to look at, if you get rid of this, you click on the mouse, um, hold control, and it'll show you an area more zoomed in. So just so you can check your features when you're dragging. All right, let's put this back over here. Um, view zoom, compare, no, don't use that. It's not going to be stack size, no. Flip and rotate. If you want to do something with your images, um, you can arbitrarily rotate them. I forget how that was. Let's, uh, let's get rid of that. All right, let's drag another. Something like that. Anyway, back to where it was. Let's get rid of that. RGB align, this is a big one. Um, guys not using an ADC. I do not use one. I was actually out last night with one and I've just posted um, a Jupiter image and it, it um, doesn't look too bad, but I was a bit, uh, <laughs> pardon the pun, in the dark with it out there today, just trying to get the um, the settings. I've had very little sleep now, so um, bear with me. Um, this will, as you can see here, there's a bit of a blue fringing and a bit of a red fringing down here. I'll quickly show you on this image, but there is another image that um, when um, I finish with the buttons here, um, we'll we'll have a look at it. It'll, it'll be a more prominent change in the data. Just 
there we go. So as you can see, it's moved um, um, the different layers, red and the blue channels, um, minus two pixels. So blue would have gone up to and reds come down to and it's um, made it not too bad but we'll just reset that for argument's sake as you can see the reds down here get rid of this RGB balance this is a big one um, and it's usually one of the first ones I go to if you've got your settings correct in fire capture or sharp cap um, your red green blue um, strength of the levels they should come out of the camera, uh, come out of the computer pretty good. So just make sure you focus on that. It takes a, takes away a lot of this. So we'll just go with an auto balance. See how it just changed it and brings all of our all of our aligned channels together. Sometimes it won't do it, but your your ideal um, graph looks something like this with all the channels closer. Mars images. Um, just go by eye because it doesn't really rule of thumb doesn't really apply on Mars but um, Saturn and, and Jupiter definitely so we'll just reset that back you see the change resize image um, I don't use this but it's pretty simple like you can you can change it I mean you can even change it down to 99% um, of the image size which for this one here this is my old 10 inch dob like probably change it two pixels that's probably a 200 pixel image um, go back to 100 we'll get rid of this denoise de ringing let's get some artifacts going here see this we'll do the align point This will probably even be more of, um, obvious when it um, changes it here in a second. Should be two and two, as we brought up before. Right, that didn't do too bad. A boy, red can go up. You can do this manually if you look down here. The green channel will start, uh, will stay in the same spot. The red and the blues are the ones you use. That's why you've only got so. If you start getting a green tinge on the other side, both your red and your blue are on the opposite side. Probably one more. That's that's about as close as you can get. There you go. I've, I've gone one more. So, uh, but let's reset that. Get rid of it. You can keep them all open. Anyway, if you look at the the edge here, so you're de-ringing, dark side, nothing there. Get rid of that. You can go to the bright side. Let's drag a little bit up there and see whether, watch the edge. See how it's changed. It's just flattened it out a little bit. Be very careful with this slider because it crucifies your data. Have a look there, the, the change that that makes. So be very sparing with this one. Righto. Let's get rid of it, see the change. Reset wavelets. Um, wavelet filter do not use masking do not use show line graph do not use in the cropping area you, you can crop I'll, I'll use um, I'll use GIMP to do my cropping so there we are and then we've got contrast down here and brightness uh, again I will use GIMP it's just a simpler um, this is a bit uh, the, the amount of time that the watch us on a smaller image is not too bad but um, on the image size that I use it takes it's, it starts to take four or five seconds to get an adjustment made even though my computer's not too bad um, and you just start running out of time if you're going to flick one at a time and it's so um, was on um, uh, GIMP 
it's just it's a much easier process. So that's about it for them. Guys, I've um, gone extremely quick here. Don't, um, don't be scared to send me a message, uh, leave a comment or something like that on one of my images or the video, and I will give you a hand, you know, if you're having troubles or you've, you just didn't understand um, the particular point um, on here that I was uh, going through please give me a, uh, a bell and we'll see if we can help you out. So histogram, this is exposed quite good. Um, not really um, a problem. As I said, color mixing, won't use that. Um, RGB aligned, we've already seen. Let's we'll put that there. Balance is a big one. Um, auto balance, bring it together. I'll we'll probably put a little bit more, put a bit of red back show area right stretch that out cover your entire planet it's just a left um, mouse button and drag and drop coming on so that doesn't look too bad now if you look at the checkboxes here and this is the same if you use Gaussian it's they are slightly different but um, see the first slider it's only going to give us noise that's not really what you're after especially with your images sometimes it can be very difficult to get good seeing and my northern hemisphere compatriots um, they are having a good spell at the moment with uh, summer and high pressure systems, but um, it's it's difficult. And if you're shooting through a lot of atmosphere, you're going to get mud, basically, which is a, a shame. But the planets are moving north at the moment. So if you look at these, that's pretty much number two with the settings at step increment one. And it's the same with the... Um, the the um, default, see how that area there is the area that you're going to adjust when you use that particular slider. That's going to give us mud. No good. No good to anyone. Right, so we'll ditch that. You can disable or able each slider just by ticking that box. This one's probably going to be close, but it'll give it a little bit of noise. It's not too bad. Right. If I was in, um, I do actually have a few of that. That's from last year, a long time ago. Um, traditionally, I would run through all of these, get it a setting I was happy with, and then I'd put it through WinGPOS. So WinGPOS, I won't sharpen an image too much. Um, I'll actually sharpen it very little just so I can see the basic outline of the planet because if you can imagine see this layer here now you look at that and you think oh yeah not too bad but if you stack layer upon layer of each image in WinGPOS you stack 10 images 10 different runs on top of each other that's just going to be a flat fat blob and everything's going to be, we, we want to be able to save the detail, even to the point where if my satin um, images are nice, that's not that one. What's this one? Let's just have a quick look. Sorry, guys, I'll have other ones open. Right, what have we got? I've actually got one from last night and drag and drop it. So see, this is the image last night and it needs, it definitely needs um, some color balance. So we'll click the auto balance. It's still a bit red for my liking. A bit green now. It's really didn't get that right. That's probably something 
pretty close to the mark. Anyway, um, if you look at this image, this is just a, a stack. This, this is, oh, well, the sharpening there, which is that. We'll reset the wavelets. Right, I will bump them back up. But if you look at that, you can see the Cassini division quite well. If I will process this image, I'll just give it a really small amount. I probably wouldn't even give it that much. As long as you can see, line up the Cassini division in WinGPOS, that's all I'm doing. I will not do that because all these edges will just become fat, everything. And you do get some artifacting here. It's a, it's a, it is a balance you'll see on some of my images and even, even down in here, you do get artifacting there. And especially if you stack images on image on image, they come back to haunt you. So anyway, let's get back to this. Drag and drop. And you'll see now, with the whole whole wavelet setting, um, you can just continue to drag different so if you've got a, a run of um, captures and you'd want to process them all the same as long as they're in the same within the same period and it's the saying is is not too bad originally like I said with my my images um, that I'll send to WinGPOS, you can just keep those settings. The whole wavelet settings will be um, a time saver. So if you look at that, all right, let's let's run back through. Let's reset that. Let's reset this. Let's reset that. And let's go to um, some of my friends' images from Twitter. What have we got here? There's a, there's a few nice little images. Um, this one here, this is here straight out of the camera. Um, I think it, it might be a 20% stack. Grab the histogram. As you can see, the colors are a little bit out. That's definitely not a problem, as we saw with my images um, before. But the histogram, so straight away, you can auto balance and look what that does. Straight away, it draws your eye to more details. When you are shooting at a smaller focal length, these first couple of sliders will become more and more beneficial, even to the point where you can start with zero. My image is shot at 6,000 millimeters focal length. Um, I usually start at one, and it's usually the second one that I play with. Second and third, I'll give a little bit of um, uh, adjustment to. But as you can see here, that's starting to get a bit rough and ready it's starting to get blocky. All right, so this particular image here, so you can just drag that. And if we use the second slider, it will start to make things blocky. So we just want to be quite sparing with that um, to the point where I probably wouldn't even do that, but let, let's, for the sake of the argument. See, there's that little bit of denoise, de-ringing there starts to come in. Everything is a balancing act, guys. So bright side. For this particular image, let's just so we can get a little bit closer. And as I said before, it's unfair to view them above their scale. That's not a bad spot to have it. It looks like the artifacting is gone. As you can see there, it comes in and out on this edge when I... So you might be processing out user-generated artifacts if you don't do them at um, uh, the correct image scale. 
Anyway, that's a great image with um, the scope. I know that's this has come from a six inch Newtonian, this particular one, and that's a great little image. Let's go, let's go next. All right, so again, we go get rid of this one, reset, RGB balance. So let's retain those sliders. They don't work. I think it's shot at the same focal length and same camera. I've got a little bit mixed up there with the, uh, the images, but we'll see in a second. So this is our auto balance, bit green. That's pretty close there. And you can see with one, that's starting to get a little bit blocky. One step increment. See, that's the bottom layer. Let's go to Gaussian and just have a bit of a look. That is a little bit finer. What you need to understand, guys, is find for your images, find the balance find that that nice balance in between starting to get a bit blocky and and adding noise we don't need the noise all right this is it's out a little bit i might show full image see here you can see definitely see the red edge all right red there red there blue on this blue down the bottom side so let's have a bit of a um, go here and see if the alignment tool that's it's done a pretty good job. Again, these images are all taken um, without an ADC. These people are just learning and doing a fantastic job. So you can leave this down here and you think to yourself, right, for the Gaussian wavelets, you can bump up the sharpening down here the lower you leave that the finer the increments will be if you go all the way up there and that doesn't look too bad starting to get a little bit blocky but you go up here each adjusting click will make the image move further and further so let's just for the sake of speed do that and you can apply a little bit of noise, do noise. We'll go full size. Just make it a bit more pleasing. Again, remember I said that the we've probably introduced those artifacts, so that could be one of the reasons people um, and the processing is hard because they look at that and they just go, oh. This is too hard. Right, uh, see how we returned it to 100% image scale. That's probably a little bit too much denoise. But again, it's about finding that balance using using the sliders to find that happy medium. What works for your images? That's a nice little image. You can see just a hint. Nice Confini, Cassini um, division. Always, if you were going to save, always save. We go wavelets and it takes it back in there. Um, what else have we got here? This is an original. See how those images are quite close. Those, sorry, those settings are quite close but they're a little bit out. That's probably the right, see how it starts to, this one will brighten the rings as well. Yeah. 
See how it's just brightening them a little bit. That's not too bad. Again, that's that's going to be zero. The the transition between all of these is very fine. See how we go to. So you got one. That's still okay at one, even if you're using one. But look at two. Two is just it's going to turn it into mud. See how it over. You, you just it's about knowing what these do finding finding ones I'm being a bit of a broken um, uh, broken tape here all right let's find another one today where did that come drizzle drizzle no no yeah here's another image we've we had and we did find out um, that this particular person didn't even have a um, uh, a filter, a uh, IR UV cut filter on the front. So it's 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 a wonderful little image considering. All right, so see those. Are we getting there? Not yet. All right, that's starting to hit the spot. All right, that's too blocky. So we found our our balance. All right, you can see that that's it. RGB align. Let's have a go. It doesn't look too bad, so it probably won't. Actually, I think I've already done this previously. I don't think it changes at all if you look up here. No, it's pretty good. Um, RGB balance. This one is difficult because it doesn't have, if you look at the red, the yeah, red's way out, but it doesn't have that filter, so we've actually got a little bit too much green there. Oh, we use a five, mm, probably six. Very difficult to um, color balance um, these images when um, you haven't got a uh, UV IR cut. So again, what would you do? We've created some ringing there, over sharpening. Light side, two ringing, bright side. See how it's changed it straight away. Look, again, be very careful with that because it will just crucify your, your, your finer details. Um, be very interesting to see what um, this particular user can do when um, he gets his um, his UV IR cut filter and um, his setup. He looks like he gets um, some reasonable seeing. Let's go back. Let's have a quick look. Um, we're sort of starting to finish up now. Um, lots and lots of ums. Righto. Here is a, yeah, as you can see, Reset that, RGB balance, reset that. Um, histogram will reset the wavelets because they won't apply. If you remember, doesn't matter between my images from the same night, the same filters will not matter. Look at that. If I was to do that, like most people just get up here and and um, pull the slider but all it's doing you look in there it's just noise all right so we'll even ditch this again drop that back and this one uh, you've seen the finished the finished image i um, derotated those ones and and got that image, but they all came from that. If you look, the color adjustments, I think when I derotated it, the sharpening may have only been something that looked, looked like that. I mean, we can do a little bit of color mixing. 
I'd um, go to WinJupos first and get it all done and then start to work on the, um, the finished product. Let's have a bit of a pause and I'll have a think about some stuff. Okay, we're back. Um, we'll just, I'll just remember about the gamma. So we'll find a satin image, drag and drop. This was quite nice data. See, it looks a bit green. Touch a red. If I went back and reprocess this, I might be able to do a, a better job, but um, it definitely wouldn't be the same. You can never, never repeat. See, there's a lot of grain in there if you use the top slider. Anyway, what I wanted to show you now, so even the second one for me, too much, too blocky. Um, default. They change slightly. That's a pretty good one. That one's not too bad. You, the noise is less. As I said, I would only just very slightly sharpen it, and then we'll put it back to uh, WinJupos. So gamma. So uh, Matt Smith's great little trick. It's a simple one, and it's probably one that in three or four years I'd have worked out. <laughs> but um, it could be, it could have been 10 years. Okay, so, see all those moons down here? And then you've got the last one it's right down the bottom, and that's just pulling it up, and the seeing was great. So you obviously, and that, that'd be just a straight cut and paste, and um, drop it in, but when you look at the, the final result, it worked out pretty good. All right, guys, that's about it. I'm going to um, try and get this finished up and, and post it. Please leave a comment or just a question if some of that went over your head. Um, I'll get back to you and I'll clarify it. And um, all the people um, that shared their images, um, from Twitter, um, sent them through. Thank you very much. And um, hopefully um, you've got something out of this. All right, guys. Peace, guys. We'll see you soon.